Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to go through an OAuth uh, 2.0 browser login flow using a web browser and AngularJS. So this is a little different because a lot of times you'll probably see the login flow happen uh, through a backend server like PHP or maybe if you've been keeping up with my uh, mobile development you're familiar with the ng Cordova OAuth. Uh, so this is slightly different. We are going to be doing this through a web browser and nothing more. And it's going to be using both AngularJS and uh, raw JavaScript. So the first thing that we want to do in this project is we want to go ahead and set up our project structure. So I've gone ahead and created a folder, an empty folder on my desktop. And we're going to go ahead and add a few files to it. So we're going to go ahead and add... Oops. We're going to go ahead and add an index.html file. And we're going to add a OAuth callback.html file. So inside the index.html file, this is where, all, where our main application is going to reside. And then inside of the OAuth callback, that's where we're going to end up after the uh, login flow completes. So in this particular example, uh, for an OAuth provider, we're going to be using Imager. I'm changing it up a bit. Imager is a great uh, image sharing service, uh, which is a, uh, they do have a valid uh, implicit grant uh, OAuth 2.0 endpoint. So another thing that uh, you should probably be aware of is this tutorial is geared towards OAuth 2.0 with implicit grant types. In other words, uh, grants uh, that were designed for JavaScript and uh, front-facing applications that require no secret key. This will only require a client ID. So we still have a few more files to create. Uh, let's go ahead and create some, some directories now. We want to go ahead and create a uh, templates directory. And we also want to create a JavaScript directory, JS. And it looks like I created it in the wrong place. Uh, no problem. I'll go ahead and go to the folder. Let's go ahead and uh, delete it there. We're going to go ahead and try to add it again. JS. All right. So inside of our JS directory, we're going to create a file uh, called app.js, and that's where all of most well most of our logic is going to end up. There's going to be a few. Uh, lines of code inside of our OAuth callback, but as far as AngularJS goes, it's going to be inside of app.js. Inside the templates, we're going to go ahead and create two files. We're going to go ahead and create a login.html file, and we're also going to create a uh, secure.html file. So basically, our application is going to have two screens. We're going to have a screen where the user can log in from, and we're going to have a screen that's protected behind uh, our OS login. So now that we have the directory structure set up, now we can start coding inside of the index.html file. Let's go ahead and add the following. All right, so right now we have a vanilla HTML page. We're going to make it a little more angular here. ng app equals example, which we're going to create shortly. And we're going to be using the AngularJS UI router. So we're going to say div UI view div. And now we need to start adding our JavaScript uh, components here. So we're going to say script source. We're going to go ahead and leave it blank for now. Uh, we're going to copy this three times. Well, there's going to be three total. All right. So. Inside my Firefox here, I've already got an AngularJS website loaded up. We're going to go ahead and we're going to copy the uh, CDN URL and we're going to go ahead and paste it in. Uh, I've also gone ahead and loaded up the AngularJS UI router CDN and we're going to go ahead and copy the minified version. I don't know if that copied, so I'm going to manually copy it here. We're going to go ahead and paste that in. And then finally, we're going to say JS app.js. So now all of our J JavaScript files are added here. The next thing we want to do is we want to create two very basic templates that our UI router will route to. 
The first of being uh, our login.html. So let's say h1 login. And we're going to say um, button ng click. We're going to design a login function shortly. We're going to say login with imgur. All right, we've got our login page set up, very simple. Now we're going to go ahead and create our secure page. We're going to say account username. Oops. Um, so when you log in to Imgur, it returns a few parameters. Uh, one of the parameters being the access token, of course, and the other parameters being, say, an expiration time, as well as the account username, which we're going to use in this example. Uh, so we're going to add our Angular brackets here and say account username. All right, we've got our two very basic templates uh, completed here. So now it's time to enter our app.js file. We're going to start adding a few things here. We're going to say var example equals angular.module example. We're going to include the UI router. Close that off there. Say example.config function state provider URL router provider. All right, so now we can set up our config here. Uh, if you've been keeping up with my tutorials, I've done quite a few on the Angular JS UI router, so this should look pretty pretty familiar to you at this point if you've been following along. So I'm going to say state, uh, state provider, say state, login, we're going to say URL, login, we're going to say template URL is template slash login.html, which is what we created, and then the controller is going to be uh, called login controller. So we've got one uh, state down. Let's go ahead and create our second and final state here. I'm going to call it secure. URL is going to be called secure. Template URL is template slash secure.html. Then finally, the controller is secure controller. Let's go ahead and slap a semicolon on that. And we're also going to go ahead and create a default route. So URL router provider otherwise slash login, and by default, as soon as we launch our application, it's going to take us to the login view. So with that done, let's go ahead and create our two controllers now. Let's start with the login controller. So example.controller, login controller, function scope, and then our other one is example.controller, secure controller, function scope as well. All right. So starting things off here, let's go ahead and start with the login controller. It's going to have one function in it called login. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually redirect to the imager uh, web service here. So that way imager controls the whole OAuth browser flow at this point. So window location dot href equals and it's going to be https api dot imgur dot com oauth two slash authorize uh, question mark client id and we'll get to that in a second here. Um, I'm going to leave it blank for now. Uh, we also want to add response type. And it's going to be token because we're doing implicit grants and Imgur supports implicit grants. 
So that's all there is to the login um, function. So going back into my Firefox here, I already have imager loaded. So I'm on the home page here. We're going to go, oops. We're going to go into settings. We're going to go into applications. And if you haven't already created an application, go ahead and do so. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab the client ID. Uh, please use your own client ID. Don't use mine. Um, and we're going to go ahead and paste it in uh, for our client ID section. All right. So the next step, um, we, we're going to go ahead and, and complete our secure controller before we do anything else. So let's go ahead and we are going to add uh, scope account username. I think that's what I call it, right? Inside of secure. Yeah, account username. And we're going to say equals JSON parse window dot local storage dot get item imager. Now this is probably not going to make a whole lot of sense right now, but it will in a second. So we're going to go ahead and get the imager uh, string from our local storage. We're parsing it out, and then we're going to access the OAuth token, not OAuth token, I mean OAuth, and then we're going to access account username. And again, this will make more sense in just a second. All right, so we've got all of our AngularJS stuff complete now. The final thing that we've got to do to wrap it up is we need to go into our OAuth callback and add some code here. And we're doing this because, again, Imgur needs a place to go after we sign in. And I made a typo. That's supposed to be HTML. Let's say head. Body. And body is going to be simple. Redirecting. It's just a message so that way the user doesn't think that we've errored out and got a white screen. All right, so in the head, we're going to go ahead and create a new script and follow along here. We're going to say var callback response equals document.url. Uh, and that's going to go ahead and grab the URL that is in the uh, URL bar. So it's going to be the full thing. It's going to be the domain. It's going to be every parameter that comes with it. So we're going to split it on the uh, hashtag symbol, the pound symbol. Um, so that means that we're going to end up with two, an array of two items. We're going to end up with an array uh, where the first half is the URL and the second half is all of the parameters. So we want that part with all the parameters, so we're going to use one because it's a zero-based array. So one being the second half of it. So we're going to say response parameters equals callback response and we're going to split it again. This time we're going to go ahead and split, split it by the ampersand symbol. And that will go ahead and make an array uh, of each parameter inside of the response. So we're going to go ahead and create a uh, empty variable here called uh, parameter map. That's going to be a empty array so that way we don't get any kind of undefined errors. Now we're going to loop through each of the response parameters in that array. So for var i equals 0, i is less than response parameters dot length i plus plus. Let's say parameter map response parameters i dot split equals zero. So what, what we're saying here is uh, this is like an associative array. Uh, we're looping through the parameter list uh, and we are getting the left side of the equal symbol. So our array has two sides. It has um, the, whole, the whole parameter. It has, for example, access token equals some token. Uh, so in this case, we're going to get the left-hand side being access token, the text access token. So it, there's several parameters that get returned. You'll see them see in a moment. It goes response parameters i dot split equals, 
And then this time we're getting the second half. This the half after the uh, equal sign. So we've gone ahead and looped the root, and we're going to say if parameter map dot access token is not undefined, that means that we were successful, uh, and that the parameter map dot access token is not null. So this means that we were successful and access token was returned in this response. So we're going to go ahead and create that imager variable that you saw in our app.js. It's going to be an object. Inside that object it's going to have OAuth and another object nested in it. Access token and then that's going to be parameter map.access token and there's, there's probably a hundred different ways you can do this. I'm just trying to spell it all out for you. You can, there, you can simplify it however you want. Expires in parameter map dot expires in and then finally account username and that's parameter map dot account username. Alright, we've got our whole object here. You can go ahead and slap a semicolon on it. We're going to say window.localStorage.setItem imger and we're going to go ahead and serialize this object so that way we can store it into local storage. So we're going to say stringify imger, put a semicolon on that and finally we can redirect that here. So we're going to say window.location.href equals HTTP localhost slash index HTML hashtag secure or slash secure. So we're navigating directly to our secure page. And then if you want, you could you could throw an error message uh, if if it was not successful. That's up to you. I'm not in this example. So with that said and done, um, now comes to testing it. You cannot test this from the file URL. You have to run a local web server of some sort or host it on a real server. Uh, it has to have HTTP and not file. Remember, HTTP. So if you're on a Mac or a Linux machine, they, you are lucky enough to have Python and ship with your uh, system. So inside the terminal, what you can do is you can do sudo um, Python M simple HTTP server and then 80. Oops. Before I do that, it's probably a good idea if I navigate into this project. So let's go ahead and try that again. 80. It'll ask you for your password. Now you're running a, a server uh, on your system here. So Let's go ahead and find a web browser here. We can use uh, Firefox still if we'd like. Let's go ahead and say um, localhost. All right. So it brought us to our page, our login page, exactly as it should. So we're going to go ahead and click login with Imgur and see what happens. And it already found me because I was already logged in. So let's go ahead and uh, clear our history and everything. And let's see if I can remember how to do that with Firefox. History? Nah. Yeah, I don't, I don't use Firefox that much. So it's... Uh, All right, not a problem. I'll just open up Safari. We'll try it again here. Oops. Let's see what happens uh, when we try with Safari. It might already be cleared. So log in with Imgur. All right. So when we tried to log in with Imgur, uh, it took us directly to the login flow that we had hoped. Um, so let's go ahead and enter our username and password. 
So I stopped the screen here because I don't want you to see my password as I typed it in. Uh, but I, I typed in my password and my username. Now I'm going to go ahead and click allow. Don't need to accept that. Not now. All right. So what happened was it hit the uh, callback because inside Imager, uh, I had the callback set to localhost OAuth callback.html. And when it hit, it saved it into local storage and then it displayed it exactly how we had in our app.js file. Because remember, we deserialized the string, we went into the OAuth node and we found the account username and we are presenting it on the screen. So uh, you can see how easy it was for OAuth 2.0 uh, implicit grants to use a web browser uh, with AngularJS to make all this happen. Uh, it, it is a lot more uh, tricky when it comes to uh, providers that don't use implicit grants because those providers were never meant to run inside of JavaScript. Uh, it's possible, but it, it requires more work.